Hello everybody and welcome back to Mythic Ocean. We return and it is time for us to move on to our next ending, which is going to be the good ending for Lutra. We're finally gonna get to have a happy ending with Lutra. So we're gonna dive in, we're gonna take care of our little baby bug buddy, and we'll see where it goes from there. All right, let's get started. Okay, hey, so I've been on my own and I've been going through this game trying to get the uh, Daily Delight Philosophy achievement and I think I got it. Um, I don't know how, but this is what I did. I figured, I looked at the achievement again, and basically it said, um, like, hear from Flip about how everyone has been doing the Daily Delight philosophy. So I decided I need to talk to everyone here. So I talked to everyone, including the swordfish, and it is right after, I, I just went to Gnosis, I went through the breach, uh, Amar's storyline is all done, we had that thing where he asked me, like, do you think I'm doing the right thing? And I I was enabling him again because I think you need to do like Amar irresponsibly to get this achievement, but that's everything I did. And, oh, hello again. Life's been going great. Thanks so much for asking. Seems like everyone in the forest is living by my daily delight philosophy now. I don't think I could be any happier about that. I got the achievement. <laughs> okay, that's how you do it, I think. Or at least that's the way I got it. I don't know if this helps, but that's what I did. <laughs> Alright, I've spoken to everyone I can in the other areas, got through the Amar and the twins' friendship to make it all good and great, and now we can speak to our sweet little baby Lutra. Where's my little one? Lutra, I'm not gonna be an awful parent this time, I promise. Hunger. Food. Empty. Must find new food. Cute baby. Oh, you're so cute. New one, unfamiliar. New one food, maybe? If you're referring to me, no, I'm not your food. No, new one in food, not same. So do you have a name? Huh? It's a word people use when they're talking about you. This one has no such word. Name, empty. But sometimes words come to this one while sleeping. But this one likes word Lutra best. Name no longer empty. Name, Lutra. New food still needed. Okay, Lutra, where did your food go? This one eats food inside pod, but pod empty now. Uncertainty. Mm, what kind of food did you eat? Food in pod, many leaves, blue and purple. Also, very favorable taste. Hmm. There's some ferns outside the pod here that seem similar. Oh, yes, leaves outside, same as inside, but Risk outside. Very great. New one brings leaves here? I could, but I won't always be here. You need to be able to eat on your own. But this one has fear. Don't worry. I'll be right here. Nothing bad will happen. Oh. Yeah, come on, come on. It's gonna be okay. I'm right here. What kind of animal do you think we are, by the way? Since all of us are sea creatures, what kind of sea creature are we? You are adorable and I love you very much. Whoa! Good lord, I was not ready for that. I was just trying to be cute with the baby. Amar, it's not your turn. You had your turn. Go away! No hunger? Oh, no hunger. Where did you come from? This one comes from Pod. Right, but what about before that? Before? Darkness, many lights. Uncertainty, maybe just sleep thoughts. Hmm, okay. Has anyone visited you here besides me? Others from outside caves sometimes appear and talk. Furry one, two that are one. 
Understanding of these ones difficult. Words of furry one and two that are one, not familiar. The thoughts arrive now, not firm thoughts, new thoughts. Exhaustion follows, sleep ensues. So now you can finally think about things other than food, right? Yes, food thoughts less, strength thoughts more. Dreams also. Maybe dreams now? Hmm. Nah, I don't think you're dreaming. This feels pretty real to me. Yes, not dreams now. Awake. But still strange. Does it ever get lonely in this big cave? Sometimes, others appear. Furry one, two that are one, always gone soon. Loneliness follows, but hunger greater before. Maybe loneliness greater now. Can you ever remember seeing other creatures like yourself? Only dreams show others like this one. Same body, same mind. Strong, wishful thoughts, but still never beyond dreams. Hmm. Perhaps they're out there somewhere, searching for you. Searching? Beacon? Like open dream space, big light is beacon. But not possible now. Much thought necessary. Whatever that means, I think it's worth a try. Wanna talk about something else? Um... Have you ever left this cave to see what else is out there? Leave cave never. Ferns in cave. Favorable. Ferns outside cave also? Hmm. I haven't seen many, but if you go looking, maybe you'll find much more food somewhere else. Much risk. Ferns necessary. All ends without. Why beyond if no certainty? Here, certainty. There's a chance something even better is out there if you're willing to take that risk. Dreams arrive sometimes. Open place beyond water, with big lights and small lights, but travel not possible. Too small, too slow, too hungry. Maybe now's not the best time, but once you've grown stronger, I bet you'll be ready. Strong feelings, fear, hopefulness, impatience also. Travel possible someday, but long wait necessary. Unfavorable. Keep at it and don't give up. You mentioned dreams earlier. What do you usually dream about? Some dreams show far places. Not cave. No ferns. Far and strange. Water ends in open place. Big, empty, dark space begins. So many small lights. One big light. Maybe there's other worlds out there. With creatures much like us, but different. Many thoughts, different worlds, exploring, seeing big and small lights someday. Hopefulness, eagerness. That's the spirit. I think you'll get there one day. Any other dreams worth mentioning? Dreams sometimes show others. Same body, same mind. Also eat ferns, speak with thoughts, always hunting. Some not crawling, flying through water instead. These dreams... Less loneliness. I see. Alright, I'm going to talk to Furry One first, because I would like to get that all situated with the Mar and the uh, Tangleheart before we talk to the twins. I found out during my runs that if you have finished up the friendship between Amar and the twins before introducing the twins to Lutra, you actually get a really cute interaction, so I can't wait to show that to you guys. Whoop! Hello, my friend. So I found the weird pod and a little larva called Lutra crawled out. Whoa! Huh, that is not what I would have expected. So that voice I heard when I was there. Was it the bug? Did it talk to you and stuff? Yep, it was like a voice in my head, just like you said. Ha, so I'm not crazy. Uh, yes, very interesting. So a larva's supposed to grow up into something else eventually, isn't it? That means it's probably going to need plenty of food, I bet. It seemed to perk up after I led it to some ferns and spoke with it for a while. Ah, I can relate. I wonder if it maybe feeds on words the same way it feeds on those ferns. It told me it wishes it could see what's beyond Moss Cavern, but it's too hungry to leave its home. Wow, I had no idea it was thinking things like that. Alright, I got an idea. Have you seen the big, viney, flower-like thing over here? I call it the Tangleheart. It's been around for as long as I can remember. At some point, I found a seed pod next to it. I never knew what to do with it, but now it's got me thinking. If you planted it in the moss cavern, maybe it would grow into a plant that could feed Lutra, you know? Thanks, Amar. Hopefully it ends up helping. Anytime, friend. Gotta say, I'm interested in where things are headed with the little guy. Let me know how it goes. I will.
All right, little baby Lucho, you're gonna have to get mad at me, but it's for your own good, okay? Sometimes with little kids or baby little babies, you you have to, you know, you have to be the you have to be the tough parent. You can't be the one that takes them to get out ice cream. You have to be the one that disciplines. Familiar one, speak thoughts together again. The furry one gave me a seed that will grow into something you can nibble on. Let's plant it. Whoop! Aww. Hey, go easy. Don't you want to save some for later? But new plant, better taste. And hunger returns now much more. Fern's not enough. Hunger worse without new plant. Why must still eat ferns? I know it's hard, but if you save some for the future, you'll have more later, right? Not favorable. Oh, Are you okay? I'm sorry, buddy. I have to. I know. Don't worry. I'm gonna have Amar talk to you. Hey, good to see you again. What's new? I planted the Tangleheart seed and it sprouted right away. Lucha really seems to like it. Wow, that's surprising. I didn't expect it to grow so fast. Glad to hear Lucha's enjoying it. Everything going well so far, huh? Well, I also told it not to eat the whole thing and it didn't like that. I think it's still hungry, but it won't talk to me anymore. Mm, that worries me a bit. Hard to say whether it really has to have the new Tangleheart or it's just being sulky, huh? Maybe I could go talk to it. See if I can explain why it needs to go easy on the new Tangleheart. You think that might help? Yes, that's worth a shot. Maybe you'll find a way to get the point across. Glad you agree. It's a good idea, friend. I'll pay Lutra a visit as soon as I get a chance. I think we can work this out. Thanks, Amar. Have you seen that big pod in the moss cavern? Yeah, we know about that thing. It's weird the way it talks to you in your head. We used to check up on it to see if anything would happen to it, but it never did. When I went there, I found a little bug called Lutra was living inside of it. No way, we never saw that. Yeah, huh. I wonder why it never showed up for us. You think it would still be there if we went? Maybe so. You two should go check it out sometime. Sure, okay. Maybe we can play some games with it or something. Yeah, good idea. This is gonna be great. Have fun. Gotta set that up. Oh, the tangle heart is still there. Familiar one. Has the furry one come to visit you again lately? The plant is still there. Yes, furry one arrived just before. Furry one's words gave this one new thoughts. Words of were of futures. First future, this one eats plant with better taste fast, gains much energy. But then new plant gone, never arrives again. Too much eaten. Second one, this one eats new plant slowly, less energy for now. But better taste plant remains, less eaten. This one wants second future. Harder, growing will be slower, but future will be better. There you go, you're getting it now, buddy. Thoughts? I think the furry one did a good job helping you pick the best future. Agreement. Happiness. But this one still worries. Ferns alone? Enough? Maybe this one searches for other new plants outside cave. Maybe something is found that familiar one could not find. If you think you're ready, give it a try. Just be careful. Many words. This one will think more. Aw, I'm glad you're the one that brought it up. Shows that they're, they're coming out of their shell a little bit, aren't you, little buddy? Oh wait, I almost forgot. Have two that are one come by to see you lately? Yes, two that are one arrived recently. Understanding of those ones easier this time. Shared words with this one, slow and patient. Two that are one showed this one activities. Those with, with those who win and those who lose. This one took time to understand, but fun ensued. This one misses those two now. Aw, I'm sure they'll visit again. Yeah, so if you 
have Amar visit the twins and you repair their friendship before sending the twins over to Lutra, instead of dropping a rock on its back, they will actually play with it. And that is so sweet. I heard from Lutra that you two paid it a visit again. Yeah, we went to see it like you told us, and it was a lot of fun! First, we told it about cool stuff we've seen in the ocean. We tried talking slow and describing things a lot. Then we wondered if we could teach it some games. And it worked! It learned how to do hide-and-seek! Well, kinda. It doesn't know how to pick good hiding spots, but it knows the rules. It was really cool. Even better than we were hoping. Thanks for showing us, new friend. Of course. Have you seen that big pod in Moss Cavern? Yes, I've seen the strange pod. It's a fascinating thing. It even seems alive, doesn't it? I'd like to examine it further, but I've been reluctant to disturb it. I found out there's a little bug called Lucha living inside it. Really? That sounds remarkable. Would you say it seems safe to go there now? Could I take a few samples in that area of the cave without worrying? Lucha seems totally harmless to me. You'll be fine. Excellent. I'm going to make a few preparations and then I'll be off. Thanks for the information. No problem. This place is incredible. The life forms here are like nothing else in the ocean. I can't wait to study these samples back at the lab. Yeah, but think about what you did to my baby. Hey, what's wrong? This one missed familiar one. I'm here now. Did something happen? Strange new one is in cave. New one brought device. Device using one came here to take things. Device using one is taking things now. The device using one said she only wants to take a few things to learn about them. Familiar one believes words of device using one? I'm not sure yet. Why? This one also lacks certainty. After taking things, device using one approached this one. Device using one used strange machine. This one could not move. This one was not asked first. This one had very great fear. Many lights appeared, moved back and forth. This one could not struggle, could not leave. Then over. This one could move again, so went inside pod. I'm so sorry that happened. Did you say anything to the device using one? No, nothing to say. Too much fear. I think you should tell device using one about how you feel. Would you be up for that? This one considers. Will this one have safety? Does certainty exist that device using one listens? Maybe device using one tries harming this one. Hmm. I'll go over to device using one first and you can follow me. I'll make sure you're safe. Acceptance. This one takes risk. Familiar one ensures safety. Alright, I'll go over here first. I am here. Come on, little Lutra. Yeah, see, it's okay. You're gonna be brave. My brave little baby. Uh, Alethea's like, what the fuck? My word! This creature can speak with others telepathically! It seems I've made an unfortunate mistake. Scanning life forms, including animals, is standard procedure for me in new places. If they appear capable of speech, I always ask for their permission. But I had no indication the larva could communicate, so I upset it greatly by scanning it without an explanation. I'm sorry this happened, my friend. That's alright. I'm glad you understand what went wrong. Indeed, and the larva told me you convinced it to speak with me. Thank you for that. Perhaps I could develop a quick scanning device that wouldn't require the subject to remain still so long. Until then, I will exercise more care. But for now, I must get back to the lab. See you shortly. Later. This one feels like device using one listened. Maybe understanding. Much relief. I'm glad, little buddy. Now then, would you like to hear about my findings? Yes, please. Excellent. Let's start with the basics. With all those odd fern-like plants growing near Lutra's pod are very unusual. I can't stress that enough. The fern cells have more in common with the pod than anything else in the ocean. I suspect the pod somehow created the ferns, possibly via water burn spores. That makes sense. The ferns were growing inside the pod too, but Lutra had to leave because they stopped growing. 
Yes, exactly. I did see the remains of many well-eaten ferns in the pod. So if the pod, the ferns, and even Lutra have so little in common with the other life in the ocean, my hypothesis is that they all came from... somewhere else. Another planet, perhaps. Another world. I don't know how that's possible, but I can't think of a better explanation. Wow, I never considered that. Amazing, isn't it? But if you think that's crazy, wait until you hear what I discovered about Lutra itself. Shall I explain? Go on. Very good. I think you'll find this quite fascinating. As you know, Lutra is capable of telepathic communication. So far, this seems to be a one-way thing. It can speak to us, but it can't read our minds. However, the data I gathered suggests the parts of Lutra's brain that grant this power are underdeveloped. They're likely to grow substantially at some point, and who knows what it'll be capable of then. That's exciting. I agree. I'm excited to see what happens with this strange creature. Finally, here's the last tidbit, and it's a doozy. Within its body, Lutra has what we call imaginal shells. Cells. These cells will one day transform into new body parts as Lutra takes on a different form. In other words, Lutra is meant to undergo a metamorphosis, which isn't too surprising. But it gets weirder. These imaginal cells of Lutra seem to be in a constant state of shifting and changing. I have no idea what to make of this. Maybe there are many different things it could turn into depending on its environment. Your guess is as good as mine, Alethea. Better, probably. <laughs> my guesses are always well informed, it's true. Thank you for listening, my friend. Of course. Now it's time for me to go and see the destruction of the kelp forest. We know what time it is. Hey, friend. Did you see what Lutra's up to here in the forest? I did. What are we gonna do? I don't know, got any ideas? Can't say I've ever dealt with a hunger crazed bug before. I watched it chew up a huge patch of kelp all by itself, and it's already getting bigger. If it keeps this up, I don't know if the forest can take it. What are we gonna do if it never stops? Calm down, Amar. I got this. Alright, where's my little buddy? Big buddy. Lutra, can you hear me? This one has greatest hunger. Eating must continue. You need to stop soon. You can't eat the whole forest, okay? The familiar one does not understand. Change arrives very soon. Greatest hunger cannot be ignored. All right, I see, but you'll have nothing left if you eat all the kelp in the forest. This one does not plan to eat all plants. Eating will continue only until greatest hunger is gone. Other creatures need plants too. If you eat most of the kelp, there won't be enough left for them. This one cannot consider others now. Only greatest hunger matters. But others are important. They can help you. Like when the furry one taught you about different futures. Remember that? This one does remember. Familiar one is right. This one must not eat too much plants. But greatest hunger still remains. What will this one eat? Will this one starve? No way, I'm gonna figure something out. You wait right there, I won't be long. And just for some extra security, we'll get Amar to watch them and then we'll go get the berries and stuff, or whatever they're called. Is there a way we can stop it from devouring the whole forest? Right, right, certainly we don't want that to happen. Well, it seems to me that Lutra was meant to feed on something else once it was done with those ferns. Perhaps if we could give it something more nutritious, it wouldn't have to eat so much. Hmm. Have you found something in the ocean that might feed Lutra better? Come to think of it, I did one find a strange plant in the mid-seas with large edible fruits. These fruits were unusually nutrient-dense. The problem is I'm not sure what such a plant would contain the right nutrients for Lutra. However... I might be able to create a crossbreed that combines the best qualities of the ferns and the fruits. Ideally, a small number of these hybridized plants would sustain Lutra for the rest of its feeding frenzy. Great, let's do that! Unfortunately, I can't have these new plants ready immediately. I have machines that can speed up the growth process, but it's still going to take some time. While we're waiting on that, is there any danger Lutra will go back to eating all the kelp? I think it'll be okay. It seems to understand the importance of not eating everything in the forest now. Good, I'll get to work then. Oh, hey, new friend. Sure's a lot happened since you were here last. Tell me everything. Well, I don't know if you had a look around the forest yet, but it's in pretty good shape. 
We lost the kelp that Lutra ate when it first got here, but other than that, there's almost nothing else missing. Once you left to talk to Alethea, I did my best to keep Lutra from going on another rampage. And it actually listened. Probably because you already got it to stop before. But hey, maybe I helped a bit, huh? After a little while, Alethea showed up. It was pretty wild, friend. She brought a ton of plants with her. Stuff I've never seen anywhere else before. Lutra went totally crazy for the new plants. You should have seen it. Just when I thought it might never stop eating, it was finally full. And it headed back to the Moss Cavern like nothing ever happened. Alright, we, now we know everything went well over here, so it's time to say goodbye to our little buddy. It's time for it to grow up into Big Buddy. Moth Buddy. The Cocoon! Lutra, is that you in there? Oh, familiar one arrives? Yes, it's me. I came to check on you. There was dreaming before familiar one returned. This one thought dreaming might never end. Great change has begun. I can see that. You look pretty, or how do you feel? Is it all going all right so far? This one misses seeing familiar one. All is dark now. Cannot see familiar one. Cannot see anything. This one has much, much fear. This one does not understand great change. What's, what will happen to this one? I don't know, we'll just have to wait and see, right? Not knowing is very unfavorable, but this one knows other new things now. New things came in dreams. First thing this one saw is that during greatest hunger, familiar one spoke with device using one to decide how to help this one. This one has much happiness about that. I helped because I was worried about you, Lutra. I'm glad it turned out okay. Thankfulness. But there are other new things. Second thing this one saw is that when two that are one played games with this one, it was familiar one who convinced them to do so and taught them patience and carefulness. This one did not know. Much thankfulness. You're welcome, Lutra. I think the twins and I both learned a lot from that. Maybe you did too. This one also saw a third new thing. Two that are one have crystal. Crystal shows them things far away, things familiar to them. Does familiar one know this? No, I didn't know that. Maybe you shouldn't tell me anything more about it. This one understands. No more thoughts shared about this then. This one will only share one more thing that was seen, and that is Device using one wants to find something. Thing device using one wants is in deepest, darkest place. Does familiar one know? No, Alethea hasn't told me anything about that. This one tried to see what was in the dark place. Something stopped this one. Only darkness was seen. If familiar one goes to that place, this one thinks greatest caution should be used. I see. Thank you, Lutra. I'll be very careful. There are other things that this one saw in dreams, but this one can feel all things slipping away. Lutra, hang in there, okay? It's gonna be all right. Lutra, this one would not have had name without familiar one. This one had much fear about great change, but familiar one helped much. Now this one only fears that familiar one will not be remembered by this one after great change. Will this one's memories disappear? Don't worry. Even if they do, I'll tell you everything that happened and you'll have them back again. This one has greatest thankfulness. Words of familiar one changed everything for this one. This one will never forget you. Goodbye, little one. I'll see you again in a little while, okay? Oh, and look at this. No matter where I go, I always feel so exposed. I wish I had a little space I could fit into in case I got scared, but it's hard to find the right one. There is a good ending to this version, just so you guys know. 
if you are on Lutra's good path, Little Frill does not get eaten, so we're gonna get that. Someone there? Sorry, can't see it too well. So dark in here, my eyes were never the best. I'd share this burrow with a friend of mine if they don't mind looking out for me. I know just the perfect roommate for ya. Could you please tell me if you ever find a little space I could hide in? There's a shrimp out there with a burrow you might like. Oh, really? Did you talk to them? They'd be okay if I stayed with them? They're actually look looking for someone to keep watch in exchange for burrow space. Okay, that sounds promising. I'll go find them. Yeah, so since Lutcher was responsible, this means there is still food here for them, and there's no reason for any eating of each other to happen. It's going great so far! I'm good at watching out for things in the burrows just the right size. Thanks for helping! That little fish you sent is the perfect roommate. Anything comes by, they let me know. It's trouble, we hide. If it's food, I catch it, we share it. Works like a charm. So cute. We also get a happy ending for the b guy on the bottom who was feeling underappreciated. Try not to get worked up about stuff anymore. About who gets credit for stuff. I just want to make sure everyone's safe. Don't need them all to know who I am. Xander knows, though. He's a good one. And Xander... Hey, did you know Zubin saved us recently? We were about to get hit again, just like that one really bad time. But Zubin used all his strength to swing us out of the way. Must have been exhausting. I was impressed. So that's how you get two other achievements. Perfect roommate and then unsung hero. Let me know if you guys want me to make an achievement guide now that I kind of know how to get everything. I might fiddle with the dolphin one a little more, but it's still a possibility. Hey buddy, check out that glow, huh? That is what we call the gift of creation. Looks like the new world's all set to go. Just let me know when you're ready. So first off, the moment our crown's been waiting for, which of the gods is gonna get the power it holds? I wanna give the crown to Lutra. Good choice, buddy. And with that, we send it on its way. All that's left now is the gift. Once you've picked it up, you'll be good to go. Off we go, it's time. Take me home, country roads, or is it country skylight? For a time, I continued to feel myself rising towards the heavens. Eventually, I came to a stop, and the blinding light around me slowly faded away. Somehow, I was suspended among the stars, and in that silent void, I began to recall the full extent of my role in the cycle. In the ocean, it was my task to advise the gods and help determine the next creator. Once the new world was born, I would become the historian, eternal observer and record keeper of every mortal age. I realized then that the book in the Library of Antiquity was written by me to preserve the history of an era past. Soon I would be starting a new book and filling its pages with all the events to come. I could sense that the gift of creation was ready to move forward, but was I? I wished I could speak with them all one last time. And to my surprise, a portal opened before me. At that point, only Lutra remained, and somehow I knew this meant they had been chosen as the creator. An image began to appear within the gateway, and for a moment I didn't understand what I was seeing. Lutra! It has blue wings when you've done a good job! Because remember in the bad ending it was orange. It dawned on me that I was looking at Lutra, who had become a huge and majestic moth-like creature. I asked how it felt to have undergone such a drastic change. This one feels new. Memories of this one, not clear, but this one remembers words. This one must save for future and save for others. Also, this one feels pulse of world fading. I nodded and explained that soon a new world would take this one's place and that Lutra would be the one creating it. I placed the gift of creation in front of me and it passed through the portal to reach Lutra. Lutra seemed lost in thought for a time. Then it tilted its head to the side, eyes shimmering brightly, as though some spark of recognition had occurred. This one understands. One thing ends, other begins. This one must choose what begins. 
I told Lutra I'd be there to write the events of history, and it could always talk to me about how things were going if it wished. Thankfulness. This one is reminded of one who was familiar. This one hopes to find familiar one again, someday. Aww. I hope they remember me at some point. Before I could respond, it took flight and was gone. I resolved to remind Lutra who I was, if I could, and help it recall the time we shared together in the ocean. Let's see what we get. My head was swimming with possibilities for how the new world might turn out. But of course, the decisions were all up to Lutra now, not me. So I gathered my things and prepared to record what happened. Lutra made contact with the gift of creation. In its new moth-like form, Lutra's thoughts of hunger had not diminished. But it remembered what it learned from the familiar one. It tried with all its mights to shift its focus away from eating everything. It thought instead of making sure others of its kind would always have food for tomorrow. Then it brought a new world forth from nothingness. When Lutra opened its eyes, it found itself on a planet blanketed in lush vegetation. A large group of its moth-like kin were approaching from the heavens, and Lutra greeted them excitedly. They ate liberally, but Lutra intervened before everything was devoured. These ones must leave some plants. They are not infinite. Other ones need them also. Recalling how Alethea had used her devices, Lutra spoke of how the moths might build things that would make their lives easier. Together, they developed technology that allowed them to grow far more plants and feed themselves and their young sustainably. Then they left for other planets to see how they were faring. Whoa! The moth-like creatures became stewards of nature in the universe, punishing civilizations that abused and exploited their planet's ecosystems. They offered to help struggling mortals develop advanced, eco-friendly technology. As long as they accepted, they would find the moths patient and supportive. If they didn't, they would face Lutra's wrath, and the results would not be pleasant. Ah, oh, these beautiful seas and jungles are the best. They remind me of the kelp forest. Amar found themselves in agreement with Lutra's calls to keep the environment safe. They offered to assist the moths by developing laws to ensure nature's longevity. Lutra, we want to help you show the mortals how to be kind to each other. Ketri and Esti were inspired by the moths' respect for all life. They assisted Lutra in maintaining the peace and developing laws that kept wars and violence to a minimum. I'm truly impressed, Lutra. You found a way to ensure the mortals treat nature with all the reverence it deserves. Alethea appreciated Lutra's willingness to establish order and defend the environment. She became the moth's lead researcher and helped them develop technology to cultivate the flora and fauna of the universe. You, as for Gnosis. Although they wished to seize the gift of creation and shape reality to their liking, all their data indicated such an uprising would not succeed. So Gnosis remained hidden in the depths, billet biding their time and waiting for the perfect opportunity. With the help of the gods, Lutra and the moths maintained their stewardship of civilization. They reserved certain planets as giant greenhouses and grew enough types of food to provide sustenance to all the mortals within their alliance. The consequences of exploiting planets' resources, or threatening the peace of the universe in any way, remained quite harsh. Fortunately, knowing that the moths were capable of, the mortals rarely challenged their directives. And so the mortals will live in peace with the gods, respecting nature and their insectile perfectors, protectors, but fearing them a bit as well. Until the cycle begins anew. Yay, we got another good ending! Lutra! The Collective. That was the name of this ending. Well, 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 we got the next good ending on our little run to try and get the last of the endings we need. Oh, it's so nice to have an actual happy Lutra, because in almost every ending we've seen that so far, except for the one with Gnosis, we had the hungry Lutra. But now we finally have good Lutra. Oh, and the reason for that is because apparently if you have good Lutra and a war breaks out, good Lutra is going to win it for them. Uh, because good Lutra can have thousands of offspring. <laughs> But either way, I'm very happy we were able to preserve nature and teach Lutra what it meant to take care of the world instead of devouring it. And now, we will be moving on to Alethea, but that will have to wait for next time. Until then, thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing. Remember to take care of yourself, treat nature with the reverence it deserves, and have a good day.